How's it going, everybody? My name is Scott Moss, and I've been an engineer for over a decade with tons of experience building applications in Node.js. In this course, we're gonna be building a command line interface, or CLI for short, which is an app in your terminal. We're gonna walk through accessing files and building your own HTTP server and everything in between. I can't wait for you to take the course because I know once you've finished it, you'll have a great foundation on which you can stand on to become a Node.js expert. Browser versus Node. So I think the biggest thing here is just like the global space and like what is in the global, right? So if I'm in the browser and I go in here and I type in window, right, there, there's a window here. It's literally everything is attached to the window, right? So it, I don't even have to include it. If I say alert, it's implied that the thing to the left of the alert is actually window.alert. I don't know if you knew that, but everything is attached to an object. And if you don't <laughs> attach it, if you don't mention that object, it's assumed that it's a, it's a global, it's on the window. So alert here would actually do something because we're in the browser, right? That's a global window.alert, same thing. Um, but we can't do a window in JavaScript, right? If I try to log this, let's see what happens. Maybe they're smart now and they mock this out, but let's see. You can see I get an error. Window is not defined. So there is no such thing as window in Node.js. The alternative to that would be something called literally global. If I can type. So if you type in global, then we get this thing, which is the equivalent of Node.js's window object. We almost never use global. It's just like you would almost never use window. It's just there. It's implied. Um, but that's the equivalent there. And you can see some familiar faces in here, right? Clear intervals, set intervals, set timeout. A lot of these things are the same thing that exists in the browser. So it's different, but not so different. Uh, even fetch now, they have fetch that seems to be built in here, which is actually, I didn't know that. That's new. I want to try that out. <laughs> um, so a lot of those things like that. The other thing is now that browsers have modules, um, there's a slight difference on how you interact with modules and create modules in the browser and Node.js. So we haven't talked about modules yet, and we will, but I'm bringing this up now just in case you've used modules in the browser before, which I don't think a lot of people do directly. I think for the most part, you probably don't, you probably don't do things like this in the browser, but the tools you use do. So if you use something like Vite or Rollup or any other build tool, uh, they'll probably do something like this for you. So you don't have to, but you can do modules in the browser now. And this is how you would declare a module. You have a script tag, type module, you point to a JavaScript file, and it's technically a module. Well, you can do the same thing in Node.js as well, except there's no DOM, so there's no script tag. So you just actually import and export your modules in code. And we're gonna talk about those in a minute uh, but they both have support for modules. And depending on what build system you have, you can use them on both environments, right? So if you wrote JavaScript in such a way that it was aware of what environment it was in, then therefore that JavaScript can run in both environments. Uh, so, and, that, and that's really simple. You can check to see if a window exists or not. You can handle that error. You can, you can stub things out. So this is where you get to like universal JavaScript that works in both environments, which if you ever use something like Next.js, like that happens in the same file multiple times. Like there's so many different environments in there, it's, it's ridiculous. And those are just two environments. And JavaScript works also in React Native or you know other different places. So and then those provide different uh, globals as well. So there's a, there's a lot going on there with modules, but we'll, we'll dive into it a little more. And then the big one here is just the DOM, right? Like all this cool stuff. You can forget about it. You're never going to do this in Node because, like, I mean, what do you think would happen if I type this in Node? Like, what would you expect to happen? There's no visual output. There's no web page. So I don't even know what that would do. <laughs> you know, I can't go reference some element called element ID because there is no, no HTML. There is no DOM. So couldn't do it. It does get a little confusing because you can do HTML on a server, which we will be doing today. But even then, that HTML doesn't get you know, executed until it's on the browser. So um, yeah, there's no DOM stuff here. But the difference is with Node, you can create what's called a server, right? If you don't know what a server is, it's 
we'll talk a lot about that as well, but it's basically like a computer that's remote somewhere that responds to requests and can send back files, data, information. Whereas like JavaScript on the browser is probably gonna be a client that is the thing that's sending requests to the server and, and not the server itself. So that's the equivalent of that. Uh, we talk about console and how that's pretty much the same. There's a lot of more differences in here. Um, these are just some of the ones that I wanted to go through because these are the ones you'll probably use the most or the ones I think are most confusing um, when you get started. Just trying to think about like, I've been writing JavaScript in the browser for so long to interact with elements. So what do I do with JavaScript now if I'm not interacting with elements? Oh, you can do a lot. And we're gonna go over that. Uh, don't worry about this server example. You're gonna be writing one of these really soon. So if this looks crazy, don't worry about it. It won't look crazy by the end of today. I'm going to use this convention to be explicit. I'm gonna say no because it's a core module. Again, I don't have to, it's just, I want to. I know for sure there's a module in NPM called FS. I don't know why they did it, but I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna use node here. So we have FS. So now let's say, um, let's say I wanna read a file. Let's read this package.json. So let's do that. So I can say const, um, let's just say read, read uh, PE JSON like this. So I'm gonna make a function that does that. And basically all it's going to do is it's going to try to read this package.json right here. It looks like my code pilot is trying to tell me that this is all it needs to do. I actually don't think that's gonna work. I think we actually have to create a new URL here, or I'm gonna say like PE JSON path is a new URL like this, oops. And we want to do this package.json import dot meta dot path name. So what the hell is this? Okay, in this latest version of Node.js, because we're using type module, we don't get access to this global that Node used to have, which is called underscore underscore dir name, which will give you the, uh, current directory in which you're working in. In fact, to recreate it, I had to, I had to write this code right here that it's suggesting. And when we pass something to read file, we have to give it, um, we, we can't pass in just like a relative file like that. We have to give it kind of like an absolute path. So we have to construct that. So that's what I'm doing. I constructed that path and now I'm gonna pass it in here. The other thing to note is that I'm using something called read file sync. This is the synchronous version of reading a file. So this will be a blocking function, which means nothing will happen until after this file is read. You probably don't want to do this, especially if, the, if this was a, imagine you had a server that was getting 100,000 requests per second, and there was one route that read a file. Okay, every other request would have to wait until that one request read the file, because it's synchronous. So you probably don't want to do this. So instead you would want to do the async version, which by default is just read file. But that's gross because it takes a callback. I don't want to do a callback. Right, who wants to do that? So instead, I'm going to use the promise version of FS that Node.js thoughtfully made for us. So we can do slash promises and we get a promise version. So now I can just do a wait right there, put an async here, and we're good. Pretty powerful. All right. Well, Let's see what we broke, because who knows if this is going to work. So I'm going to run this, and let's see what happens um, in our test file. Here we go. So URL is not defined. I think it's URL. That's why. Cool. Um, it. Oh, I'm not logging anything. I'm like, why did it not do it? Let's console.log this. Okay, there we go. So it worked. It read the package JSON file. It parsed the JSON and turned it into an object, and then it logged it. All right, so it can read any file. It doesn't matter what the file is. It can read the, con the contents of it. You can read a binary file. You can read an image file. It'll just, it'll just read it. So that's read file. It's quite powerful. Um, let's talk about writing a file. So let's write a file. And uh, let's just say... We'll do something similar here. We'll copy this path and we'll call it a new file path. 
and we'll call this, um, let's write some JavaScript, right? So demo.js. We'll write some JavaScript here. And then uh, we can say await fs.write file. Let's make sure we put async here. And we want to write to this new file path. And we want to write some JavaScript. So I'm going to put a string in here. And I'm going to say uh, console dot log yo okay so we're going to write some javascript here then i'm going to call this function like so i'm going to call this function it should write the file with the javascript in it and then we're going to execute that file all in one command all right so now i can go down here i can say node test which will call this file which will write to the demo js file a console.log and then when that's done, I then want to run demo.js, assuming it got created. So putting a double ampersand here means run this command, and then when it's done, run this command. So this is like async await in the terminal, basically. If I did one ampersand, it'll run them at the same time. This means run it after each other. So assuming test.js creates demo.js, this should work. And it did. All right, so we can go check that out. There we go, we have demo.js, it has a console.log in it, and then we executed it. All right, so quite powerful on what you can do with the file system. You can automate, I actually have a lot of automations that I do on my personal life with just a bunch of node scripts that interact with files, because it's just super powerful. Now we need to actually create the server um, that will be able to grab the HTML file that we had and uh, interpolate it with the notes that we are going to be passed down or the formatted notes, which are divs now, and then send that back to the client. So let's do that. Const create server. Server is going to take in some notes like this. And we're just going to return the HTTP.create server like this and request and response. This is going to be async because we need to await uh, reading the file, right? But first, let's get the HTML path. So const HTML path is new URL like this. And that's within the same directory here. So I can just say templates dot HTML and then imports dot meta dot yeah, URL and then dot path name. If you're on Windows, I think path name breaks it, so don't use path name. So we got that. And then now we're going to get the template. So we're going to say awaits fs dot read file from the HTML path utf eight. All right, so we got the template. And then next thing we need to do is convert that template into the real HTML that we're gonna use, which is interpolate the template with this data once we format it. So now we can say const HTML equals interpolate this template with this object that has notes on it, which is gonna be the format notes of the notes object like that. Cool, and then we just need to send this back. So before we send it back, uh, actually we can do both of these in one. We can do like a right head, which means, you know, we can do a status and the headers at the same time. So we'll say rest right head and status of 200 and then content type is probably going to be text HTML. Since we're sending back HTML, we want the browser to treat it like HTML. And then lastly, we just need to send back the HTML. So we can say rest.end with the HTML. And then we'll just create one last function to start the server. So we'll say start. This also takes in notes. Uh, it'll probably, yeah, probably take in a port as well. That way you're not stuck to the same port. And then all we're going to do is just create this server. So we can say server equals 
create server given the notes like this. And then we just need to do the same thing we did before where we listen and then, then we can open it, right? So let's say server.listen on the port that you gave us. And then I'm actually gonna call it open inside of here. And then what we can just do a log, console.log, server, go away. We'll make a address, which will be HTTP localhost to whatever port you passed in, like that, or like that. And then server on address, just so we can see it in the terminal to make sure it's on. Otherwise, it'll just look like it's hanging. We won't know what's going on. And then I just want to open that address in the browser. The last thing we got to do in here is just make sure we export what we want to use in another file. So I'm going to export start. And that's the sweet thing about modules. I don't have to export any other functions in here if I don't want them to be used outside of this file. That would essentially make these functions private. They could never be used. It also means they could ever be tested either because you didn't export them. So you got to think about that. So probably still a good habit to export them just so you can test them, but just keep note of that. So, okay, so now we have start. All we want to do here now is go back to our command, scroll down to our web command here that we haven't done, and we just want to update that. Uh, do we have, yeah, so we already have a positional for port, default to 5,000, and all we want to do is just do this. We got to get all the notes and we got to pass those notes to start and then we just got to pass in the port. So let's do that. Const notes equals await get. Um, do I have a function for that? Oh yeah, that's right. Get all notes. There we go. And then we can just say start from server, auto import that. I'm sure it did import it right. Oh, it did. It did .js this time. Why did I do it this time? That's so weird. I mean, I'm not complaining, but why you didn't do that the first time? I don't know. ARGV.port to pass in the port there. Now let's start it. 4003. Cool. There we go. And I'll have a website with my notes. So then you can go here, right? You can go into your HTML. You can add a style tag and add some CSS, make it look better do whatever you want. But basically, we just server rendered some HTML. That's what we just did. If you, so if you ever heard of server-side React, yeah, that's, that's, that's where they got this from. We just server-side rendered some stuff. Mm -hmm.